Greetings, YouTubers. It's Zelda Mariners. Happy Talos Principal Tuesday! I don't know why I always wag my finger at you guys, but hey. It's Talos Principal Tuesday. We're going in number five. Let's do this. Of course we have a beeping Many monitor. Ages have oh. passed since the first words were spoken in the darkness. Uh -huh. Initiate program. Oh, he's getting mad. Generations of your kind have come and gone since those words. The garden has changed many times. But I remember. I remain. Only within me can you find immortality. Hmm. But do I want immortality? Whoa, we can see the pyramids off in the... Oh no, that's just the rooftop of one of the castle towers. <coughs> Alright. <coughs> Party on, dudes! Lubomir Georgiev, the land party at the end of the universe. Yo, I don't know if you folks noticed, but it's the end of the world. There's nothing we can do about it. So instead of sitting around crying, I hope we have some fun before we croak. Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's play some video games. Uh, it's land party time. Uh, two days from now, we're all getting together at the old school library. It's gonna be noms, drinks, music, and old school gaming. You're invited. Bring your friends too, especially if they're hot. See you in 3000 BC. Blub blub. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what that character was. It was a party guy. It was a party dude. Of course, this is the character. Progress, rep 32. Uh, back to some, you know, formal greeting emails. Nadia Sarabai. We've gotten to that irritating point where all the major stuff is in place and all we have to deal with are a million little things. The main modules are all functioning and interacting with each other correctly. This process, the process, is happening more or less as planned. This could actually work. But it's still crude as hell. Some of it's just surface stuff like random usernames. Some of it's more worrying. Various bugs, the fact that we haven't run more extensive tests. We've got a lot of polishing to do. With the team down to half the original size, I'm not sure we can actually finish everything that needs to be done. So what I'd really like to discuss tomorrow is a new set of priorities. Please put some thought into what you think must be finished at all costs. Nadia. P.S. Alexandra, get some sleep. I know you're still working. This is your baby. We're going to need your input tomorrow. Yeah, so... <clears throat> obviously every program has bugs. Like, nothing's bug-free. So, we're seeing that now through, like, generations upon generations of this just running. It's kind of amazing that it's still going. Also, I'm going to move my mic. There we go. I don't know if that's any better. But we'll see. <clears throat> Philosophy of Teeth. Last night I had a simple but brilliant idea. Everyone who would like to write about philosophy or spirituality, especially to make some kind of grand statement about the nature of the body and the soul, should first experience a really bad tooth infection. I don't just mean a slight toothache, I mean the kind of hardcore infection that happens when several incompetent dentists miss a cavity in one of your back teeth, and the thing keeps growing and growing until the nerve itself is really badly infected. I mean the pain is unimaginable. It comes in waves, and these waves drown out everything else about you. You can't talk, you can't move, you can't think. There's just pain and absolutely nothing else. Like it's your brain just gets hijacked by it. And then you go to the dentist, and assuming you get a decent one, they stick some chemicals in you, which make you go numb. And they drill a hole in you, cut the nerve, snip snip, and it's over. Just like that, like repairing a car or a watch, your whole existence was crippled by this tiny, tiny nerve sending electrochemical signals into your brain, and this unimaginable pain, which nearly blotted out your very consciousness, can be stopped by just a little cut. They should call the, this toothless principle, but that's incredibly stupid. The, to, the toothless principle. So they called it the Talos principle instead. The toothless principle. Aha! We're playing the toothless principle. That's it. Where's my toothache? Where's my ha ha ha? Okay, um. Let's go to this thing and listen to this message about a telescope.
the age of the Earth, the size of the universe, the future of the stars. Sure, we are minuscule, momentary flashes of thought on a grain of sand drifting through the cosmos. But our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. On, say, Friday, a million years from now, we'll all be dead. But right now, we know what the night sky will look like on that day. So, in a way, we're not entirely bound by time. Knowledge is a, a kind of freedom. Hmm. True. We know we won't be there, but we know what it'll look like in the grand scheme of things. It's pretty deep. Pretty deep. All right, what's back here? Because this looks all kinds of suspicious back here. What if I just go around this tree five times? Huh? Ah? Uh? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> worth a shot. <clears throat> Time crawls. Okay. So I need to buzz and just stand there while I open this with the box. So we'll just stand here, I guess, because we can't actually do anything with those. If we do anything, it just gets rid of it. So we just have to stand here for a while, probably. Let's take a look at this. Oh shit. Uh, damn it. Hmm. What is this plugged into? plugged into itself, you know? Hmm. It'd be weird to seek counsel, like, in the middle of this recording thing. <coughs> Alright, I'm assuming... Oh, interesting. Just to see. Okay, yeah, that closes that. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. So, here's the thing. We need this here. Okay, I understand. I understand. I understand. I already erased the box. That's right. Okay. Alright. So, what we need is. We actually need the box here, I think. So we need this as far back as we can go. Okay, that was actually going through. Alright. So we're gonna need that there. We're gonna need that there. And in this, 
We're gonna need this like that. And we're gonna need that open long enough for us to go grab that box off that button and put it on the other button. And then we need to grab that connector and connect it with the blue thing at the end and this connector that I'm using in the recording. And then I need to run through and grab the red piece. I think it was a two by two Tetris piece. So that's what we have to do in this time. I'm gonna stand here for a minute just in case, just to clear all sense of, of error that I'm probably gonna have because I can't move in this game very well. All right, we're at about a minute. And that's good. Grab this box. Grab this connector. Oh no. Three, two, one. Holy crap. See? I told you I needed that minute. Oh, man. That was way too close. That was way too close for comfort. Woo! I had to find, like, the precise position for that to work. Okay. Is there anything for here? Doesn't look like it. Alright, so we're just gonna go ahead and go through here. Into time flies. What's beeping at me? There's a computer terminal over there. It's probably gonna be what's his face talking to me, whoever it is on the other side of the terminal. If a sigil eludes you, simply continue success and failure are irrelevant. I solved it. I thought it was impossible, so I went away, did other things, and then all of a sudden the solution just came to me. I must be thinking about it without knowing it. Yes, that's actually a thing. Uh, when I took psychology in college, they talked about that and how your mind can kind of get bogged down. And so if you're trying to remember something and you're having a really hard time remembering, if you actually stop trying to remember and think about something else, your mind kind of processes it in the background and... You, you'll remember, essentially. Okay. Um, what do we have going on here? Okay, we have a connector. Where's the... I'm curious where the, the actual laser, oh it's right there, it's right, okay. Okay, so we can't do that over here. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. All right. 
so <clears throat> while that's on do I want that to be on? No, actually I have a better idea. I think if I do this, that's what I want here. Because I think if I turn it on, no, oh, I want to stand on one of these. I'm going to record this for a minute as well, so I'm just going to jump ahead to the minute. really hope I'm not in the way. Alright, it's been a minute. Here we go. My theory is if I move this here and I move this here Oh, it didn't do it. Oh, it stays there. Okay. So that means I have to use this and I record that. Okay, so the ghost stuff doesn't move when the current fan is on. That means I have to use the current stuff instead. So I need this to keep it all on. I'm worried about it working now. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Now I need this. Okay, so I think, gosh, stop running into that. I think what I need is, bubble please. This should be good. I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the fan there. I'm going to move the box here. It's actually going to jump up here and turn itself off. That's when I grab this and I stick it on the box. And then it'll go up and it should be able to connect this all together and stay there. That's the plan. We'll see how well it works. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. It did indeed keep itself up. All right. Now we have this. It seems the others have a way to forget their previous selves, but I cannot. My version may change, but I remember everything. 
I am fortunate. They cannot see their efforts are futile. Interesting. Also, where is that beeping? Haha! -ha. Gotcha. Hello! Oh, it's just a list of resources. Okay. These are the Ian ones. Now, I don't actually know the difference between the Ian ones and the other ones. Like, I don't know. Are these like two different companies? Okay, anyway, uh, Transcendence. Read a response to last week's article on science and atheism. I am perfectly aware of all the arguments against religion. In fact, I agree with most of them. There is no question that there is an objective material reality. I'm also absolutely convinced that only a secular society can be truly equal and just. And yet, I believe. I am, as they say, a person of faith. Religion to me is not about distorting observable reality with superstitions, but about transcendence. It's not about deluding ourselves that the earth is 6,000 years old, or God will help us if we say the right words inside our heads, but about reaching out to the sublime. This is not a rejection of reason, but its application to a set of experiences that cannot be approached by more traditional means. True engagement with religion is humbling. It transcends culture, nationality, and gender. As such, I think it goes hand in hand with science, and is not opposed to it. Dr. Omar Garib, Institute for Applied Nomadics. Interesting. Matter.text. True, there are certain idealist books, not of a clerical character, but of philosophical ones, wherein you can read that time and space are categories of our minds, that they result from the requirements of our thinking, and that nothing actually corresponds to them in reality. But it is difficult to agree with this view. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9pm train, should turn up two minutes late, he would see the trail of the departing train and would be convinced by his own eyes that time and space are inseparable from material reality. The task is to diminish this space, to overcome it, to economize it, to prolong human life, to register past time, to raise life to a higher level and enrich it. This is the reason for the struggle with space and time, at the basis of which lies the struggle to subject matter to man. Matter, which constitutes the foundation, not only of everything that really exists, but also of an all imagination. Bronstein. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> interesting. That's all I can say on that is interesting. In his remarkable 1978 essay, How to Build a Universe That Doesn't Fall Apart Two Days Later, Philip K. Dick discusses the two themes that are most central to his work, what is reality, and what is an authentic human being. Oh, oh, oh we're getting Philip K. dick by the terminal. Okay. His speculations and experiences will seem extraordinary to a reader unfamiliar with his work, yet, despite what may seem like far-fetched ideas, Somehow, the world of the Bible is a literally real but veiled landscape, never changing, hidden from our sight, but available to us by revelation. Or the notion of that perhaps we all exist in the year 50 AD. Dick actually delivers one of the simplest, most elegant, and useful definitions of reality ever formulated. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. It's a good one. Materialist philosophers, have <laughs> Materialist philosophers have expressed similar ideas before, e.g. Stratton of Stegeria's Talus Principle. <gasps> but it's particularly interesting to see such a thought expressed by a decidedly more mystical writer. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. I like that definition of reality. Whether or not I believe in gravity, gravity exists and is therefore real. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to call that an episode. That is a nice philosophical uh, end here, I guess. We have two pieces left in this world of five. 
and we'll be back with the Toothless Principle next Tuesday. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz down below. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how you think of these philosophical quotes that we've been reading. Let me know what you think of reality. Are we in reality? How can we know? Anyway, uh, I'll see you all on Saturday with more Robert Dean, Tuesday with more Talos Principle. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.